you are more than familiar with this device right here. But are these adapters safe to use and are they really a permanent fix or should we be looking elsewhere? Well, to get an answer for that, let's take a closer look at the adapters. You've got your two prongs, your hot, your neutral, and your ground. But then if we look over on this side, the way that this is intended to work, or at least in some cases, is it's not just meant to be plugged into the receptacle, you also have this little green tab down here. Now they aren't always green, sometimes it's just a piece of metal, but they will all have this little tab down at the bottom. And the reason that that tab is on the adapter is so that when you plug it into a two-prong receptacle, you can see it's covering over the screw that's holding the cover plate on. Well, the idea is that if this is unplugged, you take the screw out of the cover plate and then insert it in through this tab here. Then with pushing the cover plate on, you'd put the adapter on and then tighten that screw going through the tab and then into the receptacle behind the plate. Now the idea here is that by screwing it into the receptacle in behind the plate, which we do anyways with a cover plate, but with that tab there, that if the receptacle in behind the cover plate is grounded, that now you have a grounded adapter. But most of the time that is just not going to be the case. You're going to have probably a plastic box or you may have a metal box, but they ran your just standard NM or Romex brand wiring. And so then in most cases, this would not be grounded whether or not you were to try and utilize that tab on the bottom of the adapter. And this is where those adapters offer such a false sense of security. Yes, you're able to use those devices now that have a ground prong on them, but it's not safe because in the event of a ground fault, you are not protected. You could be at the very least shocked or you could also be electrocuted because you do not have that safety of that ground wire being there to where if you can go with something else, some of the other things we're gonna talk about in this video, you'd be much better off doing that than using this because this is not a long-term solution and you could be putting yourself and others in danger. So now let's talk about the next way that people try to deal with those two prong receptacles and that's by basically making that adapter even more permanent. They take out the old two prong receptacles and they install your more standard three prong receptacle. Now the problems with doing this is you have all the same problems that you have with just using an adapter because these still are not grounded. But what makes this even worse than using an adapter and leaving those two prong receptacles in is that this could fool somebody. In the event that you sell your house, the new homeowner might think, I've got a standard receptacle, everything is wired correctly, I've got a ground wire, I should be protected. They have no idea that they're not actually protected and you could be putting their health or even their life in danger. Now in this case, if you're selling the house, more than likely the buyer is going to have an inspection done on their house. And those inspectors are notorious for using these outlet testers here to verify that things are wired correctly or are up to date and you have a ground there and that there's nothing that's open that shouldn't be. But there is a problem with using these devices and the dangers that are behind this receptacle may go unnoticed. So a home inspector will take their receptacle tester, they'll plug it in and both of the lights are on, which are telling us that everything is wired up correctly and there's a ground here. Except the problem is there really isn't a ground here. So let's go ahead and remove the cover plate and take a look at what this homeowner did in order to fool the inspector and this receptacle tester. But the first thing that we always wanna do before working on anything electrical is turn the circuit breaker off that's supplying the power to this receptacle. All right, so as you can see, there is no ground wire in this box in order for that receptacle tester to show that this receptacle is grounded. So let's take a look at the other side of the receptacle. And there is the problem. Hey, really quickly, if you're finding value in this or you're at least finding it to be interesting, if you could do me a huge favor and hit that thumbs up button right down below. And if you have any questions or comments, if you could leave those down in the comment section, it really does help the video out to spread out to other people and hopefully be able to help them out with this as well. I really appreciate it. Let's get back into it. All right, so what we have here is this is called a bootleg ground or a cheater's ground. And what people will do is, as you can see, they will take a piece of ground wire or they may just use a piece of the neutral wire and connect it from the ground terminal to the other neutral terminal on this receptacle. That is what is fooling the receptacle tester into thinking that this is a grounded receptacle. 
Now, out of everything that I've shown you before, this is by far the most dangerous and worst things that you can do. Some people may think that by doing this, they're actually doing themselves a favor while they're living in the home. But there are huge implications that can come with doing something like this. One of the biggest is that since this ground terminal is connected to this neutral terminal, what can happen is power can backfeed down this wire. And a lot of times our appliances, for instance, the ground is bonded to the chassis of the appliance itself. And a lot of times those are metal. Well, if the ground is bonded to the chassis of the appliance and we have power flowing through the ground wire, that chassis can become electrified. And if you go and touch that appliance, it has electricity flowing through the frame or the chassis of it. And if you touch it, you may very well get shocked or possibly even electrocuted. So of course, the biggest thing to take away from this is that this is an incredibly dangerous thing to do and it should never be done. Another thing to take note of is that while we have some really awesome tools that can really help us all along the way when diagnosing things, you cannot always just 100% trust these types of tools. Sometimes they can be fooled, like in this case, and it's gonna take further inspection either by using another tool or visually inspecting it ourselves. So now let's talk about some ways that this should be handled in order to handle it correctly. Now, of course, the best way that this could be handled is to run all new wiring. Now, that is gonna be labor intensive. It's gonna be very expensive, but if that is done, that is the most correct way of correcting this in order to get those three prong receptacles. However, there is another way that this can be dealt with that's a lot less expensive and doesn't take nearly as long. And that is done by installing this device right here. This is a GFCI, which is a ground fault circuit interrupter. Now what's awesome about these is if they are placed at the beginning of the line of the receptacles, then as long as this is installed correctly, it can actually protect all of the receptacles that are down line from this GFCI. So if there's a problem with one of those receptacles, then it will cause this to trip, cut the power off, and there will be no power even flowing on to the receptacles down the line. So these GFCIs are very self-explanatory. If you turn it over to the back here, you can see it tells exactly which wire goes where. And once all of the instructions that are supplied by the manufacturer are followed and the wires are all in their proper places, there's still one more step that needs to be done in order to make this installation code compliant. So since, again, there is no ground here, but we have a GFCI, what we have to install now is we have to install these stickers onto the GFCI itself. So this first one says, GFCI protected outlet. We also need to install this sticker that says no equipment ground. And with this receptacle being down the line, being protected by that GFCI, this receptacle also needs to receive those same stickers saying it's a GFCI protected outlet and there is no equipment ground. And we would also need to repeat this process with any receptacles on down the line that are also being protected by this GFCI device. But if you found this video to be interesting, I'll post a link right here of a video that I made showing the most common mistakes that people make when installing receptacles. And I'll also post a playlist for some other electrical projects down there. So I hope that you found this to be helpful or at least interesting. And if you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.